I got a question from Twitter about how to value a business when a large portion of the clientele is loyal to the current owner. Hey there, I'm David C. Barnett, and you're tuned in to Small Business and Deal Making, the broadcast, podcast, YouTube channel where I talk about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium sized businesses while controlling risk. So if you're looking to take control of your future through buying a business one day, or if you already own a business and you're looking to grow or exit, you've come to the right place. I talk about interesting things. I talk to interesting people and I answer your questions every week right here. So be sure to hit like, be sure to hit subscribe and let's get to it. So this question, uh, I'll read it for you. It came from a Twitter account called Family Money Saver. And basically the question is, how do you value a business where a large percentage of the clientele is tied to or loyal specifically to the current business owner and the relationship that they have with them? I think it's a great question. I, I did once make a video a few years ago uh, about the difference between personal and corporate goodwill. Um, we'll, we'll link to that here floating somewhere on the page, um, which ties into this. Um, but the, the question specifically that you posed is how do you value the business? So just as a, as a brief reiteration of, of things I've covered in other uh, videos, um, when someone looks at buying a business, there are basically two big steps uh, or three. Number one, what is the cash flow? Number two, what is the risk associated with the cash flow, which will then determine what someone's willing to pay for the cash flow? And then the third question is, will do I believe it will continue under my stewardship? So when a buyer comes and looks at a business, any business, they, they figure out what, what kind of money am I going to earn if I own the business? What's the risk associated with that? This is where we get the multiple. It's why restaurants would trade for a lower multiple than say, um, you know, uh, a roofing firm, for example, uh, because the restaurant business is riskier than some kind of construction related business, for example. And then that last question is, will it continue with me? So do I have the skills and ability to run it? So if we have a business where most of the customer relationships are with the individual that owns it today, then that we would describe this business as having a high degree of personal goodwill or the, the owner has a high degree of personal goodwill in the business. This is going to significantly impact that second and third question because the buyer is going to be afraid if I buy this business, um, what's the riskiness that the cash flow will continue? Well, there's a high risk it won't continue because the, the person that everyone likes and wants to deal with will be gone. And then the third question, you know, will it continue under my stewardship? They're going to lean towards no. So what it means is that if we're going to put a price on this business, we come back to the, the very old deal making adage that oftentimes the terms are more important than the price. So if a seller of this kind of business were interested in only selling the business on cash terms, which means that the seller gets all of their money on closing day, whether or not the buyer borrows money or not, we still call that a cash closing because the seller gets cash on closing. Most homes, for example, are sold on a cash terms, even though there's a mortgage. Um, in that scenario, the buyer is assuming all of the risk of the transaction. So they're going to put the money on the table. The seller's going to take the money. There may be a transition period and the seller's going to walk away. And all of the risk of whether or not the customers are going to carry on doing business with the new owner are going to fall on the shoulders of the buyer. Now, in that scenario, you can well imagine that a buyer is going to see this as a highly risky situation and want to reduce that price as much as possible to the point where they are comfortable doing the deal with a large portion of the clients walking away. And as you might imagine, from the seller's point of view, this is going to mean a very depressed price that they may not be happy with. And so the solution to this, and if you own a business like this, you're not probably going to like the solution, but the solution for this is for the seller to bear the risk of the continued customer relationships. How do we do that? It's through not selling the business on cash terms. So what we end up doing is we create some sort of deal where the seller becomes the financer of the vast majority of the business. So now, um, and that financing, the payments are tied in some way to the performance of the business. So now the buyer says, okay, you want me to pay full price for a business that has a good degree of goodwill. 
but I only have to put a small percentage of that price down in cash and I'm going to make payments over time to the seller and those payments or the overall value of the note or the amount I have to pay every month. And believe me, there's a hundred different ways to, to organize this. Um, the payments and whether or not the note is ever paid in full are tied to the continuation of those relationships between the customers and the new owner so that the buyer now doesn't have to worry about the risk of the seller of the customers continuing to do business with them. That risk is borne by the seller because when the new buyer comes in and becomes the operator, if those customers go away, ultimately the full price that was agreed to will never be achieved on the seller's part. And so sellers don't like to hear this. And it's one of the reasons why if you're planning to sell your business one day, you have to start to address concerns like, you know, is there a problem with personal versus corporate goodwill? Um, is there a problem with customer concentration? There's all kinds of risky things that can go on in a business that lead to this exact scenario. And so if you right now own a business, you are bearing all the risk of future performance. If you don't fix these problems, it means that when you sell, you will likely, if you wanna get a fair price, are still gonna be bearing the risk of future performance. A lot of people will manage that. A lot of sellers will be encouraged because of that kind of scenario to have a more active role in coaching, advising, et cetera, the new owner. And that is wonderful for the new owner, that the buyer really wants to hear that. So not only are you, is the buyer gonna buy the business and have a lot of the financing trouble taken care of by the seller, the seller, because they are so invested in the new owner's business, they're going to be hanging around, not to mean that they work every day, but I've had scenarios before where sellers have a, a vested interest in the new owner's business. The sellers will continue to do things to enhance the goodwill of that business. They'll talk with customers when they see them on the golf course. They'll come to trade shows for years after the trans transaction was done to shake hands of old customers as they see them and make sure that everyone has a good feeling about the business and the new owner, because ultimately that's how the seller is going to get all of their money. So family money saver, I hope that helps. I hope it answers your question. And for anyone else that's out there, I'll remind you, if you're gonna go buy a business, you should head over to businessbuyeradvantage.com where you can sign up for my online course. It deals in depth with issues just like the one I'm talking about here. And, and um, for those of you who wanna sell a business one day, from the other side of the table, from the other point of view, if you head over to howtosellmyownbusiness.com, you can find links to my book. I also have an online course for people that own a business that are gonna sell that will take you through the process and show you how a buyer is gonna look at your business. And believe me, for most business owners, <clears throat> they're so busy running the day-to-day -day of their business that they never actually stop to consider how a buyer is gonna be looking at the different things going on in their business. And it takes time to make changes. So this is something you should be addressing, not when you feel you're ready to sell, but far earlier. In fact, I often tell business owners, they should be in a state of always being ready to sell because four out of the five top reasons that small businesses go up for sale are not planned for. They're just part of life, things that happen without us knowing. And with that, I'll say thank you. And we'll see you next time. So how can you learn more about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium-sized businesses? Easy. Head over to my blog site, davidcbarnett.com, where you can learn more about me, learn how I work with my clients. You can learn about my books, courses that I prepared for you. You can also find out all about how to subscribe to my email list, the YouTube playlists, etc. There's literally hundreds of hours of content there, all for free, and I'd love for you to be my guest.